So an exothermodynamic process is an isothermal process. An isothermal process occurs when the temperature in the system remains constant between state changes. So now the volume and pressure can change, but the temperature remains constant. So for example, if we had a piston and compressed the gas inside, if the work we're doing on the gas does not raise the gas's internal energy and therefore its temperature, then the system must be releasing heat into the surroundings at the same rate as the work done on the system. Now for our piston here, this is going to be a very slow process because the rate of heat transfer through the walls of this chamber, even though the walls of this chamber are probably made of metal, it's still going to be a slow process. So to keep the internal energy of this gas the same within this chamber, we would have to compress the gas at a slow rate. And the same is true if we're moving the piston out of the chamber. And when we draw a PV diagram of this process, we get something that looks like this. We're going from state A to state B means that the system is increasing in volume and doing work on the surroundings. Also know that the pressure has also dropped from state A to state B. And again, the work done between these two states is equal to the area under the curve. And the work has a positive sign due to the fact that the system or the gas is performing work on the outside world. And also be aware that when we compress this gas, the work done by the gas is negative. Now this curve here is called an isotherm. And we can in fact find the equation of this line and integrate between points A and B. And this will allow us to find the equation for the work done in terms of the change in volume between state A and state B. So because we're using an ideal gas in our piston, the ideal gas equation applies to our problem here. When we apply the ideal gas law to isothermal conditions, the right hand side of this equation becomes constant because the temperature is constant here. The temperature doesn't change in an isothermal process. And remember, we've got a closed system here, so the number of moles doesn't change, and we have the universal gas constant, which doesn't change either. So we end up with pressure multiplied by volume is equal to a constant. And because the temperature is constant, the ideal gas law tells us that any change in volume will be a result in an inverse change in pressure. So pressure is proportional to one over the volume here. And this is why we get this curve here. So we can write the equation of this curve here, where the pressure is equal to the number of moles of gas, the universal gas constant, multiplied by the constant temperature, divided by the volume. And this is equivalent to drawing a graph of y is equal to 1 over x. And if you've started or been introduced to calculus, you would know that it's fairly straightforward to integrate this type of equation, or equations in the form of y equals 1 over x, between two points on a curve. What I'll do is I'll cover integration in more detail in a later lesson. But after we integrate, between the initial volume and the final volume between both states, our work done is equal to the number of moles of gas, the universal gas constant, multiplied by the absolute temperature. And this is multiplied by this natural logarithm here, which is a fraction of the final volume divided by the initial volume. Now we're going to do a worked example in a minute to make this a bit clearer. But because our internal energy doesn't change in an isothermal process, we also know that the work done is equal to the transfer of heat into the system. So what we can also conclude is that the heat transfer 
is also equal to this equation up here. So let's try a worked example now. Let's say we have one mole of gas in our piston and it remains at a constant temperature of 320 Kelvin. If the volume of gas reduces from one litre to 0.4 litres, what is the work done by the gas during this isothermal process? And how much heat is the system exchanged into or out of the system? Well, the work done is the area under the isotherm here, which can be found from this equation. So we simply need to plug in our known values into this equation to get the amount of work done by the gas during this volume change. Now the units for the volume of the gas do not have to be SI units here because the units cancel out in the natural logarithm. We also find that the moles of gas cancel out here as well and so does the temperature unit and this leaves us with joules on the right hand side. So we find that the work done by the gas is equal to a negative 2,400 joules to two significant figures. And we have the negative sign here because work is being done on the gas rather than by the gas. Because remember here, we're compressing the gas from a larger volume to a smaller volume. And the amount of heat transferred is also going to be this amount as well. So we're going to have heat transferring out of the system.